When it comes to keyboards, optical key switches are very much the, the hot new thing. And if I'm being honest, they're the thing that most interests me about ASUS's Strix Scope RX line, including this, their new Strix Scope RX TKL Wireless Deluxe. Great name, I know. I should put this up front though, that I'm not the target market for this board in particular. So I may not value some things as highly as a prospective buyer might, although that's not to say that I don't like this. In fact, I like this quite a lot. On paper, this is a pretty top shelf board, featuring ASUS's optical RX key switches, both 2.4 GHz dongle based wireless and Bluetooth, the smaller 10 keyless layouts, and even includes a genuinely impressive and nice wrist rest. The build quality is top notch, the feats practically glue the thing to your desk, and of course you even get double shot PBT keycaps. Sounds excellent, right? But there are a few little things that you should probably know before you exercise that trigger finger on the buy button. First, let's talk about those key switches. ASUS's RX optical switches are something that I've covered before, but in short, they use an interrupted beam of light as the trigger uh, to, to trigger a key press event, rather than a, a springy bit of metal like you find in most mechanical switches. They have also done away with the standard Cherry MX stem design, opting for a, a more square look, which both allows the RGB LED to be perfectly centered, of course the most important part, and allows them to use their scissor stabilizer that you can see through the side of the translucent switch housing. In theory, that means it's going to be a, a more stable switch, and on the whole I would agree, although it's not like it's worlds better and does still have some amount of play. The main issue that I have with the, the RX RED switches that I have here is the actuation point and the force. The, it triggers after just 1.5 millimeters of travel, with just 40 grams of initial force, only adding a further 15 grams after the actuation point for a total of 55 grams. That means, at least for my heavy and fat fingers, I trigger them by accident constantly. It feels like you only need to, to breathe on them to get them to trigger, which is less than ideal when you're in the heat of battle and you accidentally drop your gun or grenade yourself while trying to press reload. Of course, this is my personal preference and something that, well, you generally will sort of get used to, so it's not all that big of a deal, but I thought I, should, yeah, I would let you know anyway. Now, sticking with the keys, while the keycaps are pretty nice, they genuinely feel premium and, and good quality, it is worth noting that because of ASUS's RX switches, they don't use a standard Cherry MX stem, meaning that you can't replace these with a different style, profile, or color should you want to, at least from the, the standard pool that you could normally do with any other Cherry MX or Cherry MX clone style switch. You're relatively limited in what you can use with, thanks to that sort of four post design. Of course, that's not the end of the world, and for the majority of prospective buyers for this, it's unlikely that that will actually matter to you, but again, I thought it was worth noting. Moving on to connectivity, you have three options here. 2.4 GHz wireless using the included and magnetically retained USB dongle, Bluetooth with up to three devices connected, so simultaneously you can switch between using the hotkeys on the, the number keys, or wired via the USB-C ports and the included braided USB-C cable. You do also get a USB-C to A adapter, so you can plug in the dongle, sort of have it closer to the keyboard, plus you can then easily remove the dongle and plug the USB-C cable straight into the keyboard to charge it up. Now, you're probably wondering about battery life. It's okay, I'm getting to that. ASUS quotes something like 76 hours even with the RGB lighting on. 
I suspect that since the default mode seems to be 50% brightness on the LEDs and the power saving mode which you know will turn off the keyboard after something like five minutes of inactivity is turned on, that's what they're quoting there. In my experience with it, I would expect you to plug it in or need to plug it in something like once a week or so, assuming that you use it most days. If I'm being honest, I don't really get wireless mechanical keyboards like this one. I mean, Corsair's K63 wireless, which fits in their lapdog tray, I can understand. But for this sort of keyboard, which is clearly just meant to sit on your desk the entire time and not move, I guess I'm a, a little less sold on, although having that versatility is still quite nice. Happily though, I can report that when you do stick this on your desk, the thick rubber feet mean it will not be moving. It won't be sliding around on you at all while in use. Strangely, they have opted to put plastic on every piece of rubber, every foot, meaning you have to remove seven tiny pieces of plastic waste before being able to effectively use your keyboard. Even the fold-out feet have plastic on them. Do remember to remove all of that before using it, otherwise it will definitely be sliding around on you like mad. I'm also happy to report that the build quality feels top-notch. Like, this feels rock solid. There is absolutely no deck flex at all. There's no pinging. It feels genuinely premium, both in the hands and, well, under them. I personally actually quite like how this sounds too, while typing on it, have a listen. And speaking of while typing on it, personally I didn't have the utmost enjoyable time with it, mostly thanks to the layout choices made, like the extended left control key, which moves the already shortened spacebar further right, meaning that my hands somewhat converge in the middle and kind of play footsie on the spacebar. It's, you know, a personal preference, all that sort of stuff, but it does make it a little bit more awkward for me to type on this than my usual keyboard. Also, the hair trigger switches don't make typing on this any easier, although both of those things, like I said, are kind of, well, something you adjust to over time uh, with enough time spent with them and our personal preference, so you might not have that sort of trouble, uh, you know, personally. But the layout change that bugs me the most with this is the F keys up at the top. F1 to F4 are just normal. You just press them and you get the F key you're expecting, but F5 to F12 are your media keys as their primary function with the actual F key as the secondary FN plus F key action. While you can, of course, remap this in their Armory Crate software, the fact that F5 in particular is considered a secondary action, but F1 to 4 aren't, is kind of confusing. Personally, I would rather have all of the F keys be their primary function, have that consistency there, and kind of doing what they're meant to do, and then just needing to press FN to pause my music. Of course, being a gaming keyboard, I can't forget to actually talk about gaming on it. Everything that I've talked about kind of thus far plays into this being a pretty great, if a little touchy experience. The high actuation point does mean that it feels more reactive, uh, a little snappier almost, although that might also come from the fact that these are optical switches and sort of optically triggering, meaning there's no time needed to debounce the signal before sending it out. With how light the switches are too, it makes it pretty easy to quickly spam actions, albeit equally easy to accidentally mistype. With how the board is laid out, it's pretty easy to tilt the board sideways for that pro gamer style, but it's not the position that personally works all that well for me, so I tend to leave it a little bit more square. What is for me though, is this wrist rest. It's just the right amount of supportive, and but yet soft and, and supple, and while it is the faux leather material that will without fail destroy itself in a year or two, I'm not so bothered because 
I just really like how it feels. It's strange that that's the thing that I like the most about this, but there you go. Uh, it is also technically magnetic. I say technically because it is weak as, as all hell, and personally, I, I don't mind that because I prefer the wrist rest to be a little bit further back anyway to actually support my hands, so that works out well for me too. And the, uh, the final thing I want to mention is uh, absolutely hilarious. Um, this key, uh, which should be F12, but instead is a sort of little almost ninja looking character, is what Asus calls the stealth key. That isn't some in-game stealth function, or even something to do with the keyboard itself, like, you know, making it quieter, or turning off the RGB lighting. N no, in instead this hides all open programs and mutes your desktop audio. Let me say that again. This mutes your system's audio and hides all open windows. Why would you want that sort of functionality? Well, obviously, of course, it's, it's you're watching reviews of gifts you're planning on giving to your wife. Obviously, there's, there's no other possible reason that you could ever need that sort of functionality. None at all. <laughs> Um, so besides the mum just walked in button, this is a solid keyboard uh, and is definitely uh, in the more sort of competitive gaming focused realm as it were with its uh, hair triggered switches, but it's remarkably versatile. And as far as I'm aware, it's also impressively priced too. Asus are still in the process of actually rolling this out. So stock at the time of filming is a little hard to come by, but when it is available, I'd be pretty happy to recommend it to the right buyer. Of course, I'll be leaving a global Amazon affiliate link in the description if you want to check that out and check out things like pricing, when and where you watch this, or even pick one up if you fancy it. Of course, with that said, those are my thoughts and the uh, kind of, well, interesting features. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about the keyboard itself, the, the wireless functionality on a keyboard that's clearly designed to pretty much stay where it is, and the um, interesting button? Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts down, the, down in the comments. Uh, like I said, I will leave, leave a link to it in the description. Also, if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos, then feel free to hit the subscribe button to stay notified, and of course the notifications bell too. You can also check out the rest of the links in the description. You can support directly through the YouTube join button, become a YouTube member and get cool rewards for doing so, or become a patron instead and also get some cool rewards, or pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one. Also, if you're buying from places like Overclocked UK, I have an affiliate link to them in the description that you can check out. And there's a load of other stuff in the description you can check out too. If you want to keep watching, maybe check out the Optical Key Switches Explained video or the Original Scope RX review. Feel free to check those out on the end cards. And yeah, that's kind of it really. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, found it useful and informative, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll catch you all in the next one.